Hi everyone, I hope you're keeping well. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about minimalism in architecture photography. I'm in this old hammam in the Izmir region of Turkey, further south, of course, than where I'm based, Istanbul. Okay, so I've been to a few of these old hammams over the years. Lebanon, Turkey has plenty of them. In fact, they appear a lot in Middle Eastern style countries. They're getting more difficult to get nice photos of, clean photos of, and what I mean by that is they're getting, usually in city centre locations, they've been left abandoned for a long time perhaps, and they're getting more and more trashed. So to find one in this condition, yeah, it's ideal. What I'm looking for in here is like a nice shot, and the best images, there's two that I've kind of selected in my mind because I really love these, these sort of shell patterns over my shoulders that you see here. They've got lines, there's textures there, there's color, but it's quite minimal, the scene. There's this bath, this old bath sort of wash basin in the bottom left-hand corner of the scene. And, and once I photograph it, it'll be your right, of course. So of course, I'm using the Canon R5 for this set of shots. I'm gonna capture two. I'm gonna capture the one point perspective and probably a second two point as well. And for that, I've selected my 17 mil tilt shift. I need all of the space that's available to me and this width is gonna help me out to capture these shots. To emphasize this shot in here, is gonna be using a tool I've not spoken about before on the channel at all. And that is negative space. We're gonna use negative space, especially at the bottom of our frame here to get the viewers attention to kind of focus their eye further up the frame towards the color, the shapes and the details as well that are behind me here. Okay, so I'm looking for compositions still for this first one. I'm gonna clamber up here. I've got this idea that if I can get over the wall, this is horrible wall in a way, whether that works or not, I'm not entirely sure. Now the middle, that's where my foot is. The middle of the room is about here. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, annoyingly the wall is still a problem. Yeah, without, without that wall there, this would be a fantastic shot. Yeah, unfortunately that's annoying. If I had a much, much higher tripod, the ideal position would be like here, middle of the room, frame things up. But of course, we're not in an ideal world, are we? We're far from it. So I need to be further forward, and that's gonna mean I'm gonna have to crop a little bit of the flooring off in my composition. Somewhere around here, potentially. I've got an idea though, let's try it realized there's a few bricks here just a small selection I'm gonna make that a little bit higher give myself a little bit more why you ask well it's quite simple actually and that is I need as much height as possible the more height here the more I can see over the wall close to the wall, but get more of the foreground down below. In other words, I'm emphasizing and bringing alive that negative space that I just spoke about. Now pushing the legs together like this, of course, gives you much more height. But in return, of course, it's really not very stable. Um, it's not for the faint-hearted when you've got a very expensive lens sitting on top and you've already got one in for repair in the UK and it's been sitting there for months and months awaiting parts from apparently Japan. Okay, so what I've done there then is I've literally just lifted the camera up, tripod nice and close together, gets me over this wall but keeps some foreground down below. I can trim it off at the bottom of the frame, the bit that did get included. And I've used the tilt shift lens to its full capabilities, shifting all the way to the left, all the way to the right, to get a panoramic 
that's going to stitch together beautifully, hopefully, to give us this room. You could do this with a super wide angle lens, something like a, an 11 mil. An 11 mil lens up here would probably give you a really great shot, but it's more difficult to frame up for me with this lens here. Uh, I am going to look at it in my wide angle as well, once I've finished recording, just to double check. But other than that, we've used all of the elements that we've spoken about, lines, texture. We've looked for interesting elements of the architecture to pull it into that initial frame. So one of the main issues was actually this light here. The wall is blocking, is making shadow in sort of part of this image. So of course that means on my main framing, I'm going to need to do some sort of graduated filter in post to bring them dark parts alive or vice versa. Probably it's better to bring the highlights down and then make it level, like consistent throughout, and then start to edit the image. Because I want that blue to be the highlight and that's the key. So that shadow is not ideal. It's not perfect to be honest. So as you can see here, you need to pay attention to how, your, how the light plays and interacts with the architecture that you're looking to capture. So you can see in here, I've got these two windows coming in and it's kind of softly lighting this kind of left-hand side, but it is making the little bath at the back there kind of almost like 3D, which I think would then lend itself really well to a nice two-point perspective into that corner. I really like the idea of the bath and the way the light's falling in it's kind of emphasizing that shell shapes where the patterns and the textures and the tones, they look really cool. I'm going to highlight that with a nice shot because I think the light coming in here is creating a really nice 3D effect in that corner. And it's really making those kind of, I suppose the, the curves and the lines of that kind of shell really stand out. I'm not sure I'm framing yet, but let's look at it in camera and see if we can line something up. Okay, so I'm framing up a shot and I'm trying to get a little bit of distance between me and it. What I'm looking for is I don't, want, I don't want my position here to be off to the left too far because it's not gonna make my framing look very nice. So that actually means my camera, I want it to be flush with this straight bit here. You know, so basically the center of my camera needs to be flush with that piece of wall there. That's my kind of front of my composition, if you will. Which makes framing a little awkward because there's this horrible wall in the way that we discussed a minute ago. Okay, so what I've just done to kind of give myself as much room as possible is pull the camera back as far as I can, pull the legs further together, still maintain the same height, but what it's allowed me to do is just bring that camera sensor a little bit further back. So it's given me a little bit more wiggle room in the composition. I framed up really nicely. I'm gonna show you in this camera what it is that I'm doing. And you can see there, that's the sort of frame I'm looking at. But I've got the tilt shift to be able to kind of pull it up like this and include a bit more of that blue in the frame. And that's what we're looking to do. But the start of my composition is probably going to be somewhere like here. I don't want to block too much of this off. And I want the viewer's eye to kind of go through the frame like so. Now I'm actually standing the other side of the wall just so that I can speak to you. <laughs> and, uh, capture this shot and actually see what I'm doing. Now I'm just using my in-camera level to make sure I've leveled everything up properly. To be honest with you, I like everything I've now done just by taking my time. Lifted my tripod's position up higher. It allowed me to come back a little bit further, get the lens as wide as possible. 17 mil is perfect. I'm focusing on that bath, like I said. And 
most of that that you're looking at is really nice. I even like there's a little hole top left up there that I'm going to capture. Three brackets, one stop apart. Really, really nice and easy shot. Perfect, I really like it. There's a nice element to it, a 3D element that I really love, especially around that kind of curved section of the shell shape. It's beautiful. I'm then gonna shift my lens up, so I'm gonna unlock it on the right, shift it to the top, and that's gonna allow me to capture much more of that blue up above. To get the two-point perspective, what I've just basically done is I captured a pano, so top, middle, and bottom with the, uh, with the lens. But I'm probably only gonna use the top two of those, so the top section and the middle, and create an image out of that part of the framing. Because I want the blue, I want the lines, the patterns, and I want a little bit of that dead space at the bottom to pull the viewer's eye upwards, just as I did with that first image. It's really nice, I'm gonna like this one. Okay, so that's pretty much me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a pleasure to have you along here in this old hammam. If you've got any questions, leave them below and I'll come back to you. And do us a favor and subscribe and hit the bell notification. You'll be alerted when I next upload a video, which is usually on Tuesdays. This one's a little bit of a one-off. Also check out the members area that I recently launched. I think you'll enjoy it. It's got a lot more of the behind the scenes content. I've been posting videos in there probably once a month on average. I'm gonna be doing some more freebies in there this week as well. So check that one out. And that's me, until next time, bye-bye for now. And uh, I'll see you all very soon. Thank you.